Hey everyone, this is Jennifer Beamer, owner operator of Actually Dying Art by Science, and today we are going to talk about how you build up lace yarn on your bobbin as you spin. It's a little bit different than how you would go about spinning a thicker yarn, say like sport weight or worsted weight, um, because it's a very thin yarn and you have to do it carefully so that you don't end up with a mess when you either take it off to use it or if you're going to ply it or do something else with it. Now today I'm going to be using this lovely um, merino bet that I've carded. Now this is the fantastic merino that I have talked about endlessly <laughs> in some of my videos. If you've also watched the Una Shrug Fleece Project video, um, this is the same stuff. This is just undyed. Um, about 90, I'd say about 90% merino and about 6 or 7% tussa silk and then the rest is about um, nylon, it's a icicle nylon, it's a faux fiber and then um, some Angelina, she can maybe kind of see this little sparkly bit right there. Alright, so this is the fiber that I'm using, and I'm going to be spinning at about, um, I think, 40 or 44 wraps per inch, which is a very fine lace weight yarn. Uh, it's going to be a three ply by the time it's done. So I guess technically this is considered a cobweb yarn. Anyway, matters aside. <laughs> so I have my wheel set up here and I've already checked to make sure that the tension is correct although I will know for sure when I am um, put this on there now you can see my leader is already on the bobbin right here and it's kind of a fat leader it's a worsted weight yarn and um, it's kind of thick you see here so when I get started on the when you see the the white start to go into the bobbin, we're going to immediately move it to the next hook so that this builds up evenly. So attach your yarn however you want. I just slip it through like that and grab the end. And then I can feel that it's pulling just a little bit more than I want. So I'm going to decrease the tension slightly. And you can see that my yarn here, this white part, is starting to go onto the bobbin. I'm going to just pick this up and shift it over here. The reason why I'm doing that is because when you are spinning a lace weight yarn, you want to build up on the shaft of your bobbin gradually and consistently. So you're going to be moving the yarn from hook to hook, or if you have a slider hook, that would be better because then um, you can make smaller changes instead of these bigger jumps in between. And you can kind of already see that it's starting to build up. You can see that it's starting to build up here. And it's still coming in a little tight. Now, if you are spinning with a drop spindle, you don't have to worry about this stuff so much because the way you build up the cop on the shaft of your spindle is a little bit different than how you would do it with a spinning wheel. Alright, now you can see that this is building up a little bit. Now it doesn't really look like there's a lot here, but I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to move it over a little bit by one hook and here's why. We're basically building the foundations of a wall. Now if you've ever tried building a wall with Legos or those giant little tykes blocks, I don't know, they're, they're huge. <laughs> um, you know that you need to stagger the blocks such that the weak point in the center where like the two blocks meet 
is covered by a full solid block so that the wall can maintain some integrity. Well, we can't quite do that with this yarn, but um, basically what you have to think about is how do you build a stable wall? Well, you don't just put one brick on top of the other and then just keep all the way up one brick exactly on top of the other because you're going to get about five or six bricks tall and then the whole thing's going to fall over. We're kids, you know, we were all four years of age at one point, so we know what happens when that, when we do that. Now, if um, you have a structure where you have two bricks at the bottom like this and then you place a brick in the middle, that's a little bit more stable of a structure. That's one way to build a wall. Another way is to make the base wider than it is tall so that you can build a really tall wall. You have to distribute the weight and if you don't distribute the weight properly then the stuff that's on the bottom it can't bear all that weight so it starts to crack and crumble. So you have to build it out a little bit wider um, so it would help support the weight and the height so it doesn't wobble too much given any kind of uh, stress from the ground, as, you know, as a building settles or wind or <laughs> if you're in an area with um, earthquakes, you know, you want a more stable base. So if you think about it that way, this is what we're doing. By, in by moving this inch by inch over a little bit at a time, we're gradually building up this firm, stable base. If I were to just keep putting the yarn here until it was really tall, it would spill over one way or the other. It's, it's a critical breaking point. So if that happens, then all of the yarn that I have put on top of this spot will essentially be without tension. So basically you just want to keep the tension here um, so that it doesn't kink up on itself or get caught with the other yarn and later become a nightmare. So we're going to just move this over one hook or if you have a slider hook maybe um, you would move over to the middle and then we're just going to keep spinning. Also keep in mind that lace spinning will require a little bit more attention to detail than you would need for spinning a sport weight yarn or something like that. Mainly because um, you're going to have to adjust your tension here. This is um, this is what I use to adjust the tension. It, it raises and lowers this end, um, which when it's connected to the drive band like this, it will either increase or decrease the tension. Um, so when you first start off, you're going to need less tension than when you're halfway through building up the yarn on the shaft here. You're going to have to increase the tension slightly. Otherwise, you'll end up with a yarn that's overspun in the beginning and underspun at the end. You can also kind of see here, this is part of the reason why I think a slider hook instead of a stationary hook like what I have is a little bit better for uh, spinning lace yarn. You see this giant gap in the middle? Well, that's going to be filled somehow and it will in the future when we start coming back towards the orifice once we reach the end and um, that gap is going to get filled with yarn which means it's not under as much tension. These bobbins I think I think they're supposed to hold about four ounces of fiber or yarn. When I spin lace weight yarn, I usually only put about two ounces on there. And this is what um, a finished bobbin of two ounces looks like. You can see that it's not quite all the way full. And I prefer it this way because I like to ply with, this, with the bobbin this size. And if I'm going to be turning this into a three ply, which is what the plan is uh, at the end, 
um, I want to use five bobbins in my sixth one to begin the plowing process so that I can do sort of everything all at once. Um, but you can certainly pack more on here. I would just recommend against it. Um, as you can kind of see down here, Let's see if I can get a nice close up shot here with the focus. One second. You can kind of see how this is a little bit messed up down here. And that's because the yarn, as I was putting it on, it was building up here. And then part of it was starting to slump over because of the tension. Focus. Okay. You good? Okay, yeah. And um, I figure that about two ounces, two and a half ounces for a lace weight yarn is sufficient per bobbin, per four ounce bobbin. Some people will prefer to put a um, toilet paper roll or a foam roller on the shaft here. We'll put something here to give this more bulk so that when they spin they don't have to adjust the tension so much and it will help it'll help lessen this uh, problem with the valley in between the, the mountain here I think it I really don't think it matters too much I think it's more of a preference if you are the kind of spinner who would prefer to have nothing on their bobbin like me you know this method would be perfect for you if you want to have something here you can still do my method um, if you want complete assurance that your yarn is going to be under the proper tension the whole time, then you can do that as well. I'm going to move this over to the next hook and keep going. So these beginning stages probably, I would say, the trip down and back and down once more, you're going to be moving the yarn from hook to hook very frequently. I think maybe the first the first path through this way, there might be just a couple of yards per little bump. And that's totally fine. As the little bumps get bigger, as you make more passes over them, you won't need to um, switch as frequently. But you still want to maintain um, this gradual increase so that the valleys don't become too big as the mountain part. You don't want this to get too big because the valley will get big. And the yarn will want to slump over into the valley in between, uh, which is something that you don't want. I remember actually the first time that I started spinning lace weight yarn, it actually wasn't lace weight yarn, I just called it lace weight yarn because it was the thinnest yarn I'd ever spun before. And I made the mistake of building it up in one spot for too long because the yarns that I had been making before that were sport and worsted weight yarns. So they were thick and bad and they could handle it. But these thinner yarns, especially if you're using a, a fiber like mohair or alpaca, something that might stick to its uh, neighbor yarn, it can actually be a real big pain in the butt if it gets stuck. This lace yarn, like I said, it's about 40 wraps per inch, which is extremely fine. If this was a two ply, it would be about 20 wraps per inch as a two ply. As a three ply, it's about 18 wraps per inch. Now, I know that sounds crazy. How is it 18 wraps per inch? Well, I'm spinning this actually with a lot of twist because I'm going to weave this into a table runner. So I want to make sure that it will hold up to not only the abuse from the wear and tear it's going to get on my table, but also 
just being beat into the warp as I'm weaving it. Like that. Okay, so this is about as much as I would spin for each of these little bumps before moving it to the next one. And as you come back, you're going to basically do the same process. So um, I'm going to leave this here now and come back with another video uh, when the bobbin is full to show you sort of how to manage the yarn and the bumps as the bobbin is filling up because it's a little bit different than when you first start. When you first start, I feel like it's really easy to manage. It's like a fresh slate. But when you've got a lot of yarn on there, it's a little bit different and there are some problems or complications that can arise if you um, don't manage the little bumps effectively. And I will give you a couple of tips for things that I do when that happens to me, which you know, I'm not perfect and no one is, so that's okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments, you can post that in below. If you want to see other kinds of videos, please give me comments or suggestions because I'm always happy to make these videos, but sometimes I run out of ideas. And um, you can post those there. You can also post them on my Facebook page. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter and see what else that I'm doing if you check me out on my blog, which is expertlydyed.blogspot.com. And, um, you know, even get a little dose of other things that I do. <laughs> I'm not just a spinner. I also like to bake <laughs> and garden. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.